ethics in financial statements. So ethics is the adherence by members of a particular body to a set of rules propounded and implemented by the governing unit of that body. Therefore, as accountants, the body may be the ACCA, the CPE, ICA, SEMA, etc. Depending on the country or your choice of study. Now, they also set and meet out punitive measures to those who flout the rules. Every business has separation of powers. They are the owners, which we term as the shareholder or the members. And there is also the management, who are called the directors. So every business, especially a limited liability one, must have these two components, at least one shareholder and two directors. Members or shareholders can serve as directors. Nevertheless, that separation must be recognized. Let's quickly take a look at the responsibilities of the shareholders. So they contribute the resources, be it cash or physical assets, necessary to found and run the business. Some shareholders come in at the inception of the business, others later. They also meet and appoint personnel to manage the affairs of the business on their behalf, what we call the directors. They are also responsible for firing, replacing them when need be. They approve the salaries and reward packages in the form of bonuses to the directors. The directors usually propose for the shareholders to review and assent. At their annual general meetings, they meet to assess the performance of management against set targets for the period. This normally feeds into the decision to retain, replace or reward them. Members are also responsible for appointing independent external auditors who are to serve as a check on management to ensure they perform as tasked. Members can also fire and replace them when their performance fall below par. Then lastly, they approve the fees for the external auditors they appoint. For the responsibilities of the directors, they are to commit the resources contributed by the owners into choosing ventures to yield returns, pay necessary expenditures, and possibly raise enough to pay the dividend to the owners. They are responsible for the short, medium, and long-term planning, hiring, purchasing, investing, and selling decisions. They hold a responsibility to act in the best interest of the business, owners, and other stakeholders over their personal interest. They are also to make the best of decisions that will bring utmost benefit to the business. Now, that is what we term as the fiduciary responsibility. They also bear the duty to prepare the set of annual financial statements for the user's action. In as much as the accountant is taxed to prepare it, he or she does so on the director's behalf. Preparation of the financial statements. As mentioned earlier, it is the ultimate responsibility of the directors to prepare the set of annual financial statements. A statement must comply with the International Financial Reporting Standards, what we call the IFRS. The IFRS is an international accounting framework which is to properly organize and report financial information. It is derived from the pronouncement of the London based International Accounting Standards Board. It is currently the required accounting framework in more than 142 countries except the United States where the generally accepted accounting principles is still in play. Now, IFRS require businesses to report their financial performance and position using the same rules, leading to a greater uniformity in the reports of all businesses, making it easier to compare and contrast to make meaningful analysis. It thrives on four principles. Clarity, making the financial statement easy to read and understand. Relevance, it should be requisite to the user's need. Reliability, it must be without material errors or misstatements. And comparability, prepared using consistent principles to enable easy comparison with prior year, a chosen competitor or an industry metrics. Now, if the financial statements are not prepared in accordance with IFRS, it may bring about ethical issues as it might be possible for directors to breach their fiduciary duties. Ethical issues may arise where there is a choice of accounting treatment. The ways in which directors can do this are as follows. 
we have the window dressing where they manipulate certain figures in the financial statement. For example, they will give more than necessary credit to their customers to be able to increase their revenue. They might also exercise judgment in applying accounting standards. So if they want to increase profits, they might choose a depreciation method that would decrease their expenses to lead to profits. Lastly, inappropriate recording of transactions. So they might choose to record a bad debt when there is no indication of that or refuse to record it when there is clear evidence of such existence. We look at some examples of directors manipulating information to meet their targets and collecting annual bonuses and increase their salaries. The first is to deliver targets. For example, if they are supposed to get a certain earning per share or raise an amount of profit, they can decide to raise or increase their revenue by giving out more than necessary or required credits. They can also choose to reduce expenditure to get to that aim. Secondly, we can have the reduction of risk and insolvency. They can do so by avoiding breach of loan covenants. They are supposed to disclose that in their notes. When there is an indication that the business is not a going concern, they are nearing bankruptcy. Regulatory bodies might appoint administrators to step in to manage affairs. For them to avoid, they might be manipulating the figures for the user not to get to know that. They can also manipulate the account to improve business performance, especially as part of preparation for an initial public offer or to sell. They might manipulate the books for the investors to have a feeling that the business is in good standing to increase the amount that they are going to pay for it. When they also want to sell off the business, they will paint a better picture of it for them to get a good deal. There will also be the need to reduce taxes. So they will increase certain expenses. If you're supposed to use a reducing balance method of depreciation, which requires a reduced amount every year, they will choose the straight line that will reduce the profits and reduce the taxes. So they can also understate their revenue. The revenues that have occurred in one particular year can be pushed into a subsequent year. Valuation of non-current assets. If they want to state a larger class of assets, especially if they want to offer their business for an initial public offer or for sale, they have to show that the business has some assets. If the asset has been impaired, they might choose not to record it. 